With the repository pattern, we create an abstraction layer between the data access layer and the business logic layer of an application. By utilizing the repository pattern, we decouple our business layer from the data access layer. Also, the code becomes cleaner and easier to maintain and reuse. Data access logic is in a separate class or sets of classes called a repository with the responsibility of persisting the application's business model. To read more about this topic and get the source code for this project, you can visit the repository pattern article on our site. The link is in the description below. Additionally, you can check our entire ASP.NET Core series for more use cases of this pattern. So, let's open our starting project. It consists of three projects. Account Owner Server, which is the main project. Contracts, a project that contains our interfaces. And the Logger service for logging our messages. We are going to start with a new .NET Core class library project named Entities. Let's add a new folder named Models, which will contain all the model classes. Model classes represent the database tables and we use them to map the data from those tables. Of course, we should not forget to add the reference to the Entities project in our main project. So, let's add the Owner class in the Models folder. We use the table attribute to configure the corresponding table name in the database. Then, we create the owner ID property as a primary key for our owner table. After that, we add the name property. We want this property to be required, so we use the required attribute. Additionally, we want to constrain the string length by using the string length attribute. We need the date time property with the required attribute and the address property with both required and string length attributes. Our owner object is related to multiple account objects. So let's add the account property of type iCollectionAccount. Now we need to create the account class in the same way as we created the owner class but with its own properties. We are going to use the same attributes as well. Additionally, we can see the owner ID and the owner properties decorated with the foreign key attribute to state that one account is related to only one owner. Now, we have to create the context class which will be a middleware component for communication with the database. But before we do that, we have to install the Microsoft Entity Framework Core package. Now, in the root of the Entities project, we're going to create the repository context class. This class must inherit from the DB context class. In the constructor, we pass a DB context options parameter to the base class. And finally, create two DB set properties. As you can see, Entity Framework Core plays an important role in our project. If you want to learn more about Entity Framework Core, its configuration, context, queries, and how to modify data properly, we strongly suggest you reading our Entity Framework Core series. You can find the link to the series in the video description too. We use MySQL for the database, and to enable communication between the .NET Core part and the MySQL database, we have to install a third-party library named Pomelo Entity Framework Core MySQL. After the installation, let's open the appsettings.json file and add the DB connection string, where we provide information about the server, user ID, password, and the database. In the service extensions class, which is our configuration class, we're going to add the code for the MySQL context configuration. First, let's add the configure MySQL context method. With the help of the config parameter, we access the appsettings.json file, take the connection string, and register our DB context with it. Finally, in the configure services method, 
we add our context to the service collection by calling our extension method. After establishing connection with the database, it's time to create a generic repository with the create, read, update and delete methods. As a result, all the methods can be called upon any repository class in our project. First, let's create an interface inside the contracts project. Inside it, we're going to create our meta definitions for find all, find by condition, which accepts expression parameter, create, update, and delete. Right after this, we're going to create a new .NET Core class library and name it repository. We have to add the reference to the contracts and entities projects and reference this project to the main project. So, let's add a new repository base class in the repository project. Make it abstract and inherit from the iRepository base interface. Let's add the repository context property and initialize it in the constructor via dependency injection. Then we're going to create an implementation for the find all method, find by condition, create, update and delete. Once we are done, we're going to create interfaces in the contracts project for our owner and account classes. But before we do that, we have to add a reference to the entities project. As soon as we do this, we can delete the entities reference from the main project because it's now provided through a repository project. After these actions, let's create the iOwner repository interface, which inherits from the iRepository base owner interface. We're going to do the same thing for the iAccount repository interface. Now, let's create repository user classes in the repository project. First, we're going to create the owner repository class, which inherits from the repository base owner class and iOwner repository interface. In the constructor, we provided the base class with the repository context object. Let's do the same actions for the account repository class. Just in this case, we are using the account entity. Because the entities project is referenced in the contracts project, we can safely remove the entities project from the repository project. After these steps, we are finished with creating the repository and repository user classes but there are still more things to be done. Let's imagine a scenario where we need to collect all the owners and only certain accounts, for example just the domestic ones inside the controller. We would need to instantiate both owner repository and account repository classes and then call the find all and find by condition methods. That's not really a problem when we have only two classes. But what happens if we need logic from 5 different classes or even more? To solve this problem, we can create a wrapper around our repository user classes. Let's start by creating a new interface in the contracts project. We're gonna add two properties, the owner and the account and a single save method definition. After that, we're going to add a new class to the repository project. Inside, we add three private variables of type repository context, iOwner repository, and iAccount repository. Then, we have to implement the iRepository wrapper interface by adding the owner property, where we check if our owner object is null, and if it is, we create a new owner repository object and return it. 
we have to do the same for the account property to completely implement our interface. Then we use the constructor to instantiate the repo context variable. Finally, we implement the save method by using the save changes method from our repository context. In the service extensions class, we have to register our wrapper as a scoped lifetime service. And in the startup class, inside the configure services method, we are going to call our new extension method. Excellent. All we have to do now is to test this code. Let's inject the repository wrapper service inside the weather forecast controller and fetch all the domestic accounts and all the owners. We're going to place the breakpoint inside the get method, start our application and send a request from Postman. We can see all the domestic accounts returned from the database as well as the owners. So that's all for this video. To learn more about this pattern and how to use it in the real world web API project, you can visit our ASP.NET Core web API series. If you like this video, we would highly appreciate if you hit those like and subscribe buttons down there. Of course, don't forget to visit the Codemaze blog to download the source code. If you like what you see, you can subscribe to our mailing list to get notified about our new content and videos. So stay tuned and we see you again in another video. Until then, all the best.